Hey everybody, Attorney Sam here. Welcome back. Many of you who've watched my Seller Defender video have been intrigued by second wines and have requested that I identify some of my favorite second wines and talk about them in more detail. So today, I'm going to be discussing some of my favorite second wines and second labels from the left bank of Bordeaux. Before we get too far into this topic though, it's important that we're on the same page concerning exactly what is meant by second wine and a second label. A second label is a wine that's produced from dedicated vines that are never used for the top wine. Rather, it's just simply different fruit that goes into a wine with a different label. In contrast, a second wine is a wine that's produced from fruit that was not good enough to go into the top wine. This could be either because the vines were planted recently and they're not complex enough to make it into the top wine, Alternatively, it could be that the wine was determined not to be good enough at some point along the aging process before it was bottled. In any event, both second labels and second wines make for ideal seller defenders because their price is far more friendly than the top wines, and yet they still have very high quality. It is important to keep in mind whether a wine is a second wine or a second label, however, because unlike second labels, second wines are approachable far more early in their development, oftentimes on release. In contrast, second labels experience more oak aging and are often from older, more complex vines. And so these wines sometimes require some aging and maturation before they've reached their ideal drinking point. Now, before we go too much further, it's important to note that just because a wine was a second wine and was determined not to be good enough to make it into the first wine, there's certainly no shame in drinking a second wine. In fact, in many instances, the second wines of today are far better than the top wines from 30 and 40 years ago, such as in the 1970s. This is so because the strict selection process became in vogue just a couple decades ago, and so it's only fairly recently where a much smaller percentage of the harvest was used for the top wine, leaving the remainder of the harvest for second, and now sometimes even third and fourth wines. The result has been that the quality of the first wine has gone much higher. And similarly, where third and fourth wines are made, the quality of second wines is extraordinarily high, and in many cases could even be better than it was for the first wine in the 1970s or so. Furthermore, second wines are made by the exact same winemakers and the same winemaking team using the same equipment as the top wines. One of the differences is that oftentimes the second wine won't see as much new oak. This makes it less expensive to produce, but it also means that it's ready to drink far sooner than the top wines. And this is one of the advantages of a second wine and one of the reasons why it's an ideal seller defender. Specifically, this is because you can enjoy this wine when it's young and open it right away while you're waiting for the top wine to mature. So with that by way of background, let's go ahead and get started. My number one recommendation for a second wine is from Chateau Margaux, and specifically it's the Pavillon Rouge. Pavillon Rouge has been on a remarkable streak of excellence, and the 2018 in particular is one that I highly, highly recommend. This one may very well be the top second wine of 2018. In terms of the price difference, the Chateau Margaux is around $600, whereas the Pavillon Rouge is only about $250. And while this may seem like it's still a fairly high price to pay, you should consider that the top wine, the Chateau Margaux, was produced with only 36% of the fruit. Pavignon Rouge was produced using 36% of the fruit. And so the remainder of the harvest was used for the third and fourth wines. So this is one of those instances where the addition of third and fourth wines has resulted in a much higher quality for the second wine. And just one pro tip for you, when you're out there evaluating second wines, one of the best ways you can determine whether or not the second wine is likely to be high quality is to determine the percentage of the harvest that was used for the top wine. The lower the percentage of the harvest used in the top wine, the stronger the second wine will be. And again, that's especially true if there's a third and a fourth wine that will take away from the, the lower level of the fruit. And so you can see that Chateau Margaux is an ideal candidate for a second wine since only 36% of the harvest was used for the top wine. The second producer I'd like to discuss is Chateau Lioville Escasse. Lioville Escasse is interesting because they have both a second wine and a second label. Both are worth mentioning in this video. The second wine is very intriguing because they just started to produce this wine in 2007 after they had replanted some of the vines used for the top wine. The second wine is called Les Petits Lyons, and it also includes a lot of the Merlot that used to go into the top wine. Previously, the Merlot was used to soften the top wine because in many years, the Cabernet Sauvignon 
in the Cabernet Franc struggled to ripen adequately, and they didn't want the wine to be too harsh or tannic. And so they would include that Merlot in the top wine to soften it a bit. Now, however, a lot of the Merlot is used in the second wine for Leo Villascas. That makes it very approachable early on, and definitely a candidate for early drinking. Better still, the price discrepancy for the second wine is very, very compelling with Leo Villascas. Specifically, for the 2018 vintage, the top wine sells for about $300 in the U.S., whereas the second wine would be about $69 in the U.S. The top wine did receive 100-point scores from at least one critic. However, that same critic spoke very, very highly of the second wine, and the second wine is generally critically acclaimed as well. So for only $69, that's a pretty incredible deal, especially when we can enjoy it earlier. As I mentioned earlier, Leo Villascas also has a second label. The second label for Leo Villascas is Clos du Marquis. This is made from a separate vineyard in a walled area next to the chateau. It's actually extremely close to both Leo Villebarton and Leo Villepoifer. So we're certainly talking about excellent terroir for this particular wine as well. But like the Le Petit Lyon, this can also be purchased for around $69. As mentioned previously, however, this one as a second label is one that's going to require some more aging as it does have a lot more tannin and acidity than the second wine for Leoville Descas. Next up is Chateau Palmer Alter Ego. The Alter Ego is one of my favorite second labels. As the name suggests, Chateau Palmer has used specific plots to produce the Alter Ego since 1998, and it always offers consistent quality at a fraction of the price of the top wine. Alter Ego will certainly benefit from some additional bottle aging after you purchase it, but it's definitely going to be one that you can enjoy much sooner than the top wine for Chateau Palmer. Sadly, however, they were unable to produce it in 2018 as there were some extreme yield shortages at Chateau Palmer due to some inclement weather. My next recommendation comes from Chateau du Cru Bucayou, specifically the La Croix de Bucayou. This is again a second label that comes from a dedicated vineyard. This wine is generally outstanding every year, and to give you some comparison of the price discrepancy, for the 2018 vintage in the United States, you can get the second label for around $57, whereas the top wine costs around $220 US. And of course, for all my European friends, when I mentioned pricing, you should always take it with a grain of salt. Of course, you can get much better pricing in Europe than we can in the United States because the U.S. has the three-tier system. Nevertheless, the relative comparison should give you some idea as to the amount that you could save by going with the second wine or the second label. Chateau Lagrange also has a second wine that I highly recommend, specifically the Les Fiefs de Lagrange. This is a second wine that's highly regarded year in and year out. Of course, one problem you may encounter when deciding whether or not to purchase the Chateau Lagrange second wine is that the top wine is already an extremely compelling value, and so you don't need to spend that much to get the top wine with Chateau Lagrange. However, you can still enjoy a substantial cost savings on a percentage basis by getting the second wine, and it also will be ready to drink a little bit earlier than the top wine. In many years, Chateau Lagrange uses less than half the wine to go into its top wine. In 2018, it was a little bit more than that. It was around 54% that went into the top wine, and 46% went into the second wine. Nevertheless, this is an extraordinarily strong vintage, and certainly the second wine will be a very compelling buy in the 2018 vintage as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, and you'd like me to make other videos about second wines, perhaps from the right bank of Bordeaux or other regions around the world, please let me know in the comments below. And of course, please be sure to smash that like button and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss the next one. I come out with weekly wine videos, and so I'll be coming out with another one very shortly. Until then, drink well.